Hello, my name is Mark Dolinar. I'm an applications engineer here with Hawkridge Systems. And today we're going to be talking about in-context design inside of SOLIDWORKS. Now the basic premise behind in-context design is giving us the ability to go through and create parts that have relationships with other parts that are built inside of our assemblies. For this particular example, we'll be designing a top cover for our Raspberry Pi. The top cover itself has already been designed, and by inserting it in as a part in the assembly, we can actually see where the problem lies. The individual ports for this top cover have yet to be cut, and that's what we'll be doing for this in-context design. The basic premise behind in-context designs is giving us the ability to go through and edit those existing parts. Now by default, we can simply double click on any part inside of an assembly and it will bring up the particular dimensions for that part. Changing the part dimensions in the assembly does not make this an in-context part, it simply changes the part from the assembly context. In our case, what we're going to do is actually create sketches and features that are designed for this part. But we need to be careful. Notice in here, I started a sketch directly inside of the context of the assembly. Had I gone through with designing this part as so, this particular feature would be an assembly specific feature, which means that the part features itself would not propagate back down to the part level. If I do want this to be established as a part feature, what I'll do is right click on that particular face and I'll hit edit part. Notice now the assembly tab has disappeared from the command manager, indicating that I'm editing a part even though I'm still inside of the assembly. The next thing you'll notice is the default settings for the part have changed. All other assembly features and parts have now changed to this transparent state. Personally, I do like to modify some of these settings, and in our case, we'll go into our system options and change our assembly edit part. I'm going to change the color to something um, that's vibrant just to indicate that I'm changing the color. Next, we'll actually specify to use this color when editing parts. Finally, in order to make it easier to select on items, I'm going to change the assembly transparency to opaque to allow me to quickly and easily select on those identified faces and edges. Now it's clearly identifiable that I'm editing that particular blue part inside of the context of our assembly. Next up, I'll begin a sketch, and inside of the sketch, you'll see all of the ports on the left-hand side of the Raspberry Pi will be selected using an intersection curve in order to actually project a cut directly onto that model's face. Once the intersection curve has been complete, and some of the sketches have been cleaned up. The next thing I'll do is actually perform an offset entities to give a little bit of wiggle room as I'm inserting this Raspberry Pi into these individual ports. In our case, I'm just gonna give it a slight offset and you'll also notice I'm gonna turn on construction geometry for the base geometry so that I'm only creating one individual cut. Now, everything else is exactly like you would do inside of a part we'll just perform a simple cut feature and we'll notice that this particular feature is not going to be an assembly feature it's actually going to be housed directly at the part level but the part will be communicating back and forth into the assembly in order to get the proper offsets for each of these individual ports. Now we have them cut out on the left hand side easily accessible to anyone that needs them. I'll repeat the same process on the right hand side in order to make these ports accessible. After creating the sketch and cutting these ports out as a new feature, they've now been linked back into the top cover part. Any changes made to the Raspberry Pi, whether size variations of those ports or location will automatically update in the part. Notice also, jumping directly into the part file, the individual features now have an in-context relation, relationship arrow, indicating that there's features or elements that are being dropped from outside of this part into the model in order to generate the piece. But now, let's go ahead and look at how we can create a brand new part directly inside of our assembly. I'll click on new part, but something weird happens. 
notice that all the buttons on the command manager automatically go blank as if I cannot select on them. Well, one thing happens. Bottom left hand corner of the screen, SOLIDWORKS is actually asking us for a new sketch plane to create our sketch on. In this example, I'm just going to create a new sketch directly on the bottom face of the top cover. And for this sketch, I'll create a boss extrude feature of the bottom plate. Now this bottom plate actually has quite a lot of information built into it. First, it's automatically linked to the top cover in size and in depth. Also, we'll now actually go through and add additional relationships directly into the Raspberry Pi so that we can create some cutouts for the bolts to actually hold that Raspberry in place. In our case, I'm just going to go through and select on all these edges. And in context design is really that easy. We're still using the exact same features we normally would inside of the part file, but instead of us having to go through and manually select on each feature, typing the dimensions, and then measure them out and double check to make sure that everything lines up properly, we're building all that stuff in directly at the assembly level. At any point in time, if any of these parts were to change, it will actually work and update properly. Last thing to note, notice that the new part that we created now shows up in brackets under part two. I can change the name, in this case bottom cover, but those brackets still appear. Those are indicating that this particular part is an in-context part, meaning that, or is a virtual part, meaning that it's only available inside of the context of this assembly. Now, if we ever want to access this without opening up that main assembly, what we can do is actually save this out as its own separate part file. A warning screen will pop up indicating that it is a virtual part and we're going to break that link, but that's okay. SOLIDWORKS will automatically update that link for us. In our case, jumping back into the main assembly, we'll now notice that those brackets disappear, indicating that this is a normal part and not a virtual part found directly inside of our assembly. With that, we've now looked at a variety of different ways of actually working with in-context design inside of our parts, and we'll be able to actually model our parts faster and quicker and maintain all those relationships when things do change. I'd like to thank you for watching this video, and please subscribe to the Hawkridge Systems YouTube channel for more educational content such as this.